There's a segment of the party who wants to keep the Republicans in the past. Jimmy LaSalvia is the co-founder of the now-defunct gay Republican group Go Proud. For years, he was one of the most prominent gay conservative activists in America. In his new book, No Hope, Why I Left the Republican Party and Why You Should Too, LaSalvia talks about how the party's failure to adapt to America's fast-moving evolution on social issues led him to question his partisan loyalty and ultimately embrace political independence. Jimmy, thanks so much for talking to us. Thanks a lot for having me. So the book is basically your tell-all about why you went from being a lifelong conservative and longtime GOP activist to a dissident. Talk about the moment that you decided to leave the party. One very highly publicized uh, controversy was when GoProud was a co-sponsor of CPAC, the big conservative conference. We were boycotted by anti-gay social conservatives and there was a real effort over two years to get us kicked out of CPAC. Eventually, they were successful. Then the presidential campaign started in 2012. I was the most high profile gay person advocating for Mitt Romney. And that was torturous for me. The Republican Party has been hostile to gays for a very long time. So what made the party tenable to you in the first place? What made you pick <laughs> well, that team? Well, I grew up in an Air Force family, grew up with a conservative perspective. There came a point uh, about a decade ago in 2004 when I knew the Republican Party was on the wrong track regarding issues relating to gays. And so I wanted to work with them while the country was evolving to make sure that they weren't left in the past. And ultimately, uh, while I made great progress and we had some great successes, ultimately there's a segment of the party who wants to keep the Republicans in the past. So is it just social issues? Well, is that the main thing well, that's untenable that's just, about the party that's for you? That's just it. It's, I came to see that there's a segment of the right who just aren't comfortable with people who aren't like themselves. And in our new, modern, multicultural reality, uh, that makes that coalition untenable for most Americans. So if the purpose of political parties is to win elections and, you know, the ultimate prize is the White House. Uh, I just don't think that that untenable coalition that is unacceptable to most Americans has the ability to win the White House. You talk about your disgust for partisan politics, but you speak warmly in the book of both Ann Coulter and the late Andrew Breitbart, both of whom made their names on incendiary sure. rhetoric. Why is their partisanship okay with you and others aren't? I think in some cases, and in particular, she did a lot to help me mm -hmm. and to help gay conservatives. Right, on, I was speaking to Go Proud, and there was a lot of... What is Go Proud? Um, a conservative gay group, and the real conservatives, unlike log cabin Republicans. Andrew Breitbart, you mentioned, he was a good friend of my organization and, and mine, and he did a lot of great things to help gay conservatives. He was really smart with his bomb throwing. And I think that since he passed away, a lot of people amp up their divisiveness. I mean, there was an article on uh, Breitbart.com recently that referred to the rainbow flag as a gay hate flag. Yeah, I, I oftentimes ask myself what Andrew would think of his company these days. I think they've gone off the rails and always trying to force controversy. And many times we see where issues move from being right versus left to right versus wrong. And we've seen that with race, we've seen it with uh, gender, now we've seen it with sexual orientation. Too many on the right tolerate those people who don't. Mm -hmm. Their position has now become wrong to most Americans. And so if you're always defending parts of your coalition and defending their right to be wrong, then eventually everyone else thinks that you are just as wrong as they are. In your book, you talk about meetings with certain Fox executives and you kind of imply that they don't even believe half the stuff right. they're selling. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, I remember uh, it was back in 2011, I believe, and uh, I get this call and it's Roger Ailes' assistant. And a few days later, I was in his office and we were talking about their coverage of gay people and gay issues. Roger was very frank, you know, he understood where the country was going culturally and that the whole country was evolving and it was evolving very fast, but that their audience wasn't. 
Throughout the course of the following two years, I had many conversations with other executives at Fox News. And one thing that I came to learn is that they program for the audience and they know what gets ratings. And so they give a safe place for those people who are wrong on issues to be wrong because their audience wants to be validated. They refer to their audience as the OFWGs. Which stands for? Which stands for old fat white guys. <laughs> and showed me what they really think of their business, that it's all business with them. It's not uh, that they have a certain point of view. They understand the emotional triggers that fire up their audience. And so when I was looking at you know, my work within the conservative movement and the Republican Party, it's very hard to help move the dial and help them evolve culturally when you have their primary source of news validating their opinions that are based in the past. Can you talk a little bit about Mitt Romney? It seems like around the time of his presidential candidacy is when you pretty much had your heart broken for the last time. These days, especially with the crop of Republican candidates they've got, people are looking back to Mitt Romney as the, the last civilized man to make it to the front. So tell me why you would uh, disagree oh, with that. Oh my gosh. The vote for president is an emotional vote. Voters want a candidate who they think sees things from their perspective. The old adage, who do you want to have a beer with? And Mitt Romney is perhaps the worst candidate for that. You know, he's this rich white guy. Well, he's a Mormon who doesn't drink. And too. he's culturally out of touch. I mean, completely. I mean, he had no interest in people helping him to appear to be culturally connected. Go Proud didn't even have a position on gay marriage. Mm -hmm. We were the Tea Party gays. We were the perfect vehicle for the Romney campaign to use to show that he is culturally connected. They flat out denied sending a surrogate to speak at our event at the Republican convention. We threw an event in Tampa at his convention to herald our support for him. We had a thousand people in the room and they couldn't even send anybody to say thank you. That was a bridge too far with them. We couldn't appear publicly. And after six months of being the gay for Mitt, who was met with a facepalm every time I was asked to help, I decided not to vote for him. You're pushing for nonpartisan uh, politics, and the book is called No Hope, but do you see any hope among the next generation of Republicans in possibly saving their party from itself? I think there are a whole lot of young, right of center people who care about their country and are engaged, and I would just urge them to join me outside of the political system. We're a right of center country. We need to roll back the size and scope of our government. And as long as you're playing on a team that consists of an untenable coalition, you're wasting your time. Let's focus our efforts on making our country better, not just helping some people be in charge. Thanks so much, Jimmy LaSalvia, the co-founder of Go Proud and the author of the new book, No Hope, Why I Left the Republican Party and Why You Should Too. For Reason TV, I'm Anthony Fisher.